Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Quote of the day, a little progress each day adds up to big result. Today I will uh, do a critical appraisal of an expert opinion under kind supervision of Professor Dr. Saira Afzal. The title of uh, today's article is Expert Recommendation for the Management of Iron Deficiency in Patients with Heart Failure in India. This is an expert opinion and we can use the GBI critical appraisal checklist for textual evidence expert opinion. GBI stands for Jonathan Johansberg Institute critical appraisal checklist. Abstract of an article. Iron deficiency is a common comorbidity in heart failure and is independently associated with a worse quality of life and exercise capacity as well as increased risk of hospitalization regardless of anemia status. Although international guidelines have provided recommendation for the management of iron deficiency in patient with heart failure. In the method section, a panel comprising cardiologists from China, Hong Kong, India, Japan, Malaysia, Pakistan, Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, and Thailand convened to share insights and provide guidance for the optimal management of iron deficiency in patients with heart failure tailored for the Asian community. Expert opinion were provided for the screening, diagnosis, treatment, and monitoring of iron deficiency in patients with heart failure. It was recommended that all patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction should be screened for iron deficiency, and iron deficient patients should be treated with intravenous iron. Monitoring of iron levels in patients with heart failure should be carried out once or twice yearly. And in the conclusion, these recommendations provide a structured approach to the management of iron deficiency in patients with heart failure in Asia. So according to a checklist, you can see that in the title and abstract, they identify as expert opinion in the title and they provide a structured summary of the expert opinion in the form of background methods, results, and conclusion. In the introduction section, in the last paragraph, they briefly uh, describe the rationale of the study. The procedure for management of iron deficiency are not standardized across Asia, and there is paucity of clinical data, leading to inadequate awareness and treatment of this condition. Hence, a group of experts in Asia convened to discuss clinical gaps and to provide Recommendation to general physician and cardiologists regarding the screening, treatment, and monitoring of iron deficiency in patients with heart failure to optimize clinical outcomes in the region. This is the last paragraph of the introduction section, and you can see that the rationale of the study is quite clear. So in the introduction section, scientific background and explanation of objective was clear. In the methodology section, they explain the methodology, a panel comprising cardiologists from China, Hong Kong, India, Japan, Malaysia, Pakistan, Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, and Thailand, convened to share insights and provide guidance for the optimal management of iron deficiency in patients with heart failure tailored for the Asian community. In this paragraph, you can see that all the experts, especially cardiologists, are gathered then they provide their expert opinion in the different uh, section of this article in the form of screening, in the form of diagnosis, in the form of management, and in the form of monitoring. A PubMed search was conducted for available scientific data and literature, including meta-analysis reviews, as well as global and Asia-Pacific specific clinical trials. They can use the RCTs, which are published from 2007 to 2020 pertaining to treatment of iron deficiency in heart failure, which were then reviewed and discussed in detail by all these experts. And then they give the expert recommendation were agreed upon by the panel through multiple online and offline communication. This is their expert opinion in the diagnosis section. All patients with heart failure in Asia should have an iron 
panel carried out to screen for iron deficiency regardless of their hemoglobin levels and renal function as iron deficiency is an independent and strong predictor of outcomes in heart failure and an important target for therapy. Screening is simple and feasible and iron deficiency should be defined as serum ferritin less than 100 nanogram per ml or 100 to 299 nanogram per ml and transferrin saturation less than 20%. Use of serum iron as a diagnostic marker requires further validation in clinical trials for heart failure and should not be used to diagnose iron deficiency in heart failure. So three things are required for diagnose the iron deficiency in heart failure. One is serum ferritin. Uh, only two things. One is serum ferritin and other is transferrin saturation, not serum iron. Healthcare professional, including biochemist and pathologists who perform the test, should be educated on the reference range for ferritin and transferrin saturation levels recommended for the diagnosis of iron deficiency, so as to better identify patients with heart failure who are iron deficient. These are the summary of selected clinical trials that are used in the uh, study. And in which you can see that all are the RCTs and there are different therapies of heart failure with iron are going in these RCT trials. And in these patients, there is IV iron sucrose is given. And in these patients, IV ferric carboxymaltolase is given. And in this, there is IV ferric desmomaltolase is given and you can see that in the result they can say that there is significantly improved left ventricular ejection fraction significantly significantly improved incremental increase in functional capacity significant improve in, in all these patients when they give the uh, when they manage their iron deficiency in the left ventricular heart failure, they can see that there is a improvement in the results. So on the basis of these clinical trials, they give, the, they give their expert opinion in different steps for the management of iron deficiency patient in left ventricular hypertrophy in the form of this algorithm. And you can see that First, they give their expert opinion in the patient selection. And the patient is heart failure with left ventricular ejection fraction less than 45% according to New York Heart Association class two and three and four. Then in the next step uh, is the iron deficiency screening. And they can give their expert opinion when the serum ferritin level is less than 100 nanogram per ml or serum ferritin between 100 to 299 and transferrin saturation is less than 20%. Then comes the HB levels and they can say that if HB level 13 to 15 gram per de deciliter for males and 12 to 15 gram per deciliter for Females exclude active infection and malignancy. And if HB is less than 13 for males and less than 12 for females, check anemia if it is due to iron deficiency or clinic. And if the clinical cause, treat accordingly. Otherwise, proceed with iron deficiency treatment. And if HB level is more than 15 gram per deciliter, then do not treat with IV iron. Iron deficiency treatment. No benefit of oral iron in iron deficient patient with heart failure. Give IV iron treatment for iron deficient patient who have chronic heart failure or are admitted for decompensated heart failure. And in the IV, they suggest the ferric carboxymylase is the preferred IV formulation to correct iron deficiency in the line with the current breadth of data available in heart failure. Administer appropriate dose of IV iron 
ferric carboxylase based on the patient's total iron need calculate using the chart below according to the patient's body weight and in the monitoring check serum ferritin and trans saturation and hb level at next appointment preferably after 3 months and one to two times per year thereafter depending on severity of heart failure and iron deficiency so according to a gbi checklist the points that are covered in this expert opinion is was the author a non expert in the field of being studied yes the all authors were expert in the field of cardiology and the next question did the author declare any bias so there are no bias declared in this uh, expert opinion was the patient population problem and or issue clearly described yes in this expert opinion they well describe about the patient population and their problem and issues was a literature search background section included yes there is a literature search and the background section are given but uh, there is a weak literature because introduction section is too small was the background literature clearly described yes the background literature are given but again uh, the uh, section of introduction was uh, too small uh, they further elaborate by adding some more uh, literature in the introduction section was the data range cited uh, literature crunch and does the range of the data is described yes in the methodology section they uh, clearly explained that they were used the a uh, so meta analysis systematic review and randomized uh, clinical trials from 2007 to 2022 so the range was clearly described uh, was more than one point of view reported or refer yes there is one uh, more than one point of view was discussed by, by the author because they give the their expert opinion in all the section first they discuss the screening and then they give their expert opinion then they discuss the uh, management section and they give their expert opinion and then after a uh, management they give their expert opinion in the form of monitoring so more than one point of view is reported were the authors conclusion clearly present yes in the end uh, after the result the conclusion section is clearly presented was there freedom from conflict of interest yes there is a freedom free for the author in the conflict of interest where limitation of the expert opinion described and discussed uh, the limitation of the expert opinion uh, is given in the last paragraph but can not clearly explain in the end so the limitation of this uh, expert opinion is weak where implication for practice suggested yes they clearly uh, discussed that how you can implement uh, these uh, recommendation for their general physician and cardiologists in the treatment of heart failure of the uh, patient with left ventricular ejection fraction so this is all from my side and uh, this is the youtube link of this presentation please like and subscribe our youtube channel and thank you